as I told a friend of ours, this is where fan service and tea service collide. Uh, <laughs> Let us now return to Downton Abbey and also parts of the south of France in the sequel, which is called Downton Abbey, A New Era. But is anything really new? Why do you think he gave you the villa? That is where the mystery resides. Then go off to the Riviera. And with any luck, we'd miss the whole of Mary's frightful film. I do hope that was a prop. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, yeah, so it's 1929, question mark? They never really say, but we're, we're meant to assume that some time has lapsed since the last movie because the last movie ended with Lady Edith pregnant again, and now she has a kid, and we open with the wedding of um, uh, the former chauffeur, and I, if you want character names for me, come on, Tom Branson and Lucy. Uh, Tuppence who, Middleton. Tuppence Middleton. I, her <laughs> name I know. Like the most uh, who, British name ever. Exactly. <laughs> her and Imogen Poots. Uh, anyway, so they, they, they were engaged at the end of the last movie. We opened this movie with them marrying. Um, two main storylines unfolding here. One, um, uh, the Dowager Countess realizes, oops, I have a villa in the south of France that I thought was a joke, but no, it turns out I really own it. And uh, <laughs> the guy who left it to me died. And so now I want to make sure that uh, it goes to, to young Sibby so that she has some kind of inheritance because she's the only one of her grandchildren that isn't directly lineage, blah, 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 the whole thing. Um, so this means that everybody has to go investigate this. So off goes Lord Grantham and Cora and... Uh, Carson for some reason and uh, and 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 Tom and Lucy and uh, um, uh, anyway this is a big Lady tr- Edith oh, goes to Edith, Edith and her husband <laughs> and then the ones who then Lady Mary stays back at home because a film company <laughs> is going to rent the house to shoot a silent picture which of course everyone is aghast about but the roof is leaking and they could use the money so they say yes um and then of course midway through shoot it turns out oops talkies have taken over and so the leading lady who's your basic lena lamont from singing in the mm-hmm. rain cannot mm-hmm. speak as classily as she looks so in comes uh lady mary to the rescue as her dubber um the staff is all excited about the movie they've got their own shit going on um <laughs> Uh, 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 you know, the, 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 the leading man of the movie is making eyes at the gay butler. Uh, you know, it's just, it, look, there's a lot of beautiful property and tea sets and tweed and gowns. And that's why you're here. Right. And that's, <laughs> that's what you get in Downton Abbey and New Era. And is that enough though? Like as a fan, did you feel satisfied by this? I felt sated by it all. <laughs> I mean, there were moments where I was like, <sighs> what? <sighs> What? Like, just like the stuff that just outright makes zero sense. Can you, you just... say without spoiling it? Well, okay. For example, um, <laughs> Carson is horrified, horrified, horrified that this film company is going to come shoot at Downton and, oh, it's the end of everything and where are our standards? And that's part of why they ship him off in the party to France. But then by the end of the movie, they somehow talk him into being an extra you know <laughs> so just stuff like that where like people will make a big stand about something they'll be like eh, sure whatever you know we're just we're just gonna roll along with this um you know hugh dancy plays the director of the movie and he and lady mary have kind of a thing although she's married to matthew good who's not even in this movie um, because he's but, busy being robert evans exactly but she keeps <laughs> getting telegrams from him you know um eh, it, it, look, if you watch the show when you watch the first movie and you just want another taste of this nonsense, then you get two plus hours of it. Um, you are somebody who didn't watch the right. show and kind of came in cold for the first movie. Are you still sort of like, what is the big deal here? No, I, I get the allure of the escape. I absolutely do. And like the, the sets and the costumes are exquisite and it harkens to this time that like in theory should clang like the the celebration of the aristocracy mm. like in this economy like it it, it should clang well, but well it's, it's the fantasy of how it's the fantasy of how well they treat the staff which is what makes it you don't want to send them all to the guillotine whereas in real life i'm sure they were all they would have been assholes right and the fact that the actress the one who talks like this like <laughs> she's so rude to the staff and like 
that we will not have that here. Yeah. Right. And so like the fact that civility reigns over everything is like a noble aspiration. It's a nice idea. Right. So there, yeah. there is that. Um, do I get it? I guess so. And a lot of the allure of it, of course, is Maggie Smith just saying, showing, showing up <laughs> and being in there. I wanted like the Maggie Smith and Natalie by showdown. That is a missed opportunity, alas. Right? You know, we get Natalie by as the the widow of the, the the villa owner who is not happy about these British interlopers and wanting to sue them, and she's you know this great regal force of cinema. And uh, you're right; I think not not having any scenes where where she and Maggie Smith could face off is that that's that. What were you thinking, Julian Fellows? That was right there. I can see how if you're deeply invested in this movie or in this series rather, that there mm -hmm. are things in the movie that will be moving to you where I felt like, okay, all right, this is all kind of like superficial and whatever. And I'm, I'm unmoved by it, but I'm sufficiently transported for a little while. And, you know, Mr. Carson is, is a treat of course, and his voice is amazing. And <laughs> I, I enjoyed the, the whole, like knowing very self-aware, knowing trashing of the vulgarity of cinema. Oh, <laughs> yes. actors are so uh, vulgar. They're going to steal the spoons. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of that's funny because, of course, it's like actors making fun of themselves and, and all sure. that. But, you know, it's fine. I think if, if you are a fan, you will enjoy it. I would like more for the gay butler. I would like more something more substantial for the gay butler. But I guess, like, if we're keeping with a certain kind of remove, you know, aesthetically yeah, tonally you can't get there exactly it's not like a it's not like the straight people are like you know fucking like mad in this movie in fact there's you know dave and i was dave was asking me about like why is there no horniness in this movie when season one of this show like lady mary has has like a, a one night stand with a guy who dies and lord grantham is like you know getting it on with one of the staff members and like the this is it's re, it's pretty much chased all around so the it, why why would the, the gay butler get any more action than that and also i think they are trying to be honest of like even though everybody around him is fairly open-minded and says compassionate things about you know they want happiness for him blah 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 it is the 1920s in england and let's not pretend that that was any kind of like easy time to to be a gay guy so you know i think they're they're trying to as much of a fantasy as this is they have to acknowledge a little bit of that reality so I, you know i i was i was okay with that uh it's and this is not bridgerton by the way where everything is like oh, no. <laughs> sexy and, and hot and raunchy like no, yeah this is, this is uh, as i as i told a friend of ours this is where fan service and tea service collide <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know if you're a fan you will be serviced well i look forward to uh next week when we do the bob's burgers movie yes yeah, so we can I, places <laughs> yeah which i know a ton about because it's like nick's favorite show and i've watched a ton of it with him and you were not quite so overwhelmed i don't think because you weren't as you know well yeah i went in, i went in cold so i i kind of had the same you know Yes. We'll, well our numbers aren't actually that far off. I'm saying six. I said seven. I, I, I had a good time, even though I was periodically just going, okay, movie, sure, whatever. <laughs> right. So Downton Abbey, A New Era is only in theaters, correct? That is correct. 